Hello guys, Buffonet here and today I'm going to be taking a first look on a closed beta version of Arknights which is a waifu slash who's bundle collector and it also features a tower defense style of a gameplay which is pretty nice but before I jump into the combat let's first take a look at some of the characters that you can collect in this game and I would say that when it comes to the artwork they are pretty nice and just like in Azure Lane for example I believe that everyone will be able to find a character for themselves that they like and if you are into whose bundles and not really into waifus then you don't have to worry there is quite a lot of nice whose bundles in this game as well I just simply didn't get to do too many pulls in the closed beta myself so I mostly have only the waifus but you don't have to worry about it, it's basically what I'm saying so when it comes to the artworks and the characters you can get in this game I would definitely give it a pass now before I show you the actual combat gameplay I would like to talk a little bit about the story in this game as well so basically if you like reading if you enjoyed let's say Fate Grand Order story or, or let's say Girls Frontline story then you definitely will want to give this game a try the story is actually pretty good and also another nice thing about this game is those tutorial stages that you can see they, they are basically present in every chapter at least in every chapter I have done so far and nice thing about those tutorial stages is that they will basically teach you everything almost everything that you need to know about this game so compared to the other games where you need to, you know, always use the videos or go to some Wikipedia or look up some guides, this game will basically teach you almost everything through those tutorial stages. Now, also when it comes to the translation quality, I would say it's actually pretty high. Of course there have been a lot of quite quite a lot of typos and some awkward sentences but I'm pretty sure that they will be able to fix all of it for the open beta so you don't have to worry about it. Now for the other game modes there are your daily stages. The first one is open permanently and this is where you get the EXP materials to upgrade your characters. The second one gives you the one of the shop currencies. The third one gives you the skill up materials to upgrade the skills for your characters. The fourth one gives you LMD, which is basically the gold currency in this game. And the last one gives you the materials that you need to use for your base to upgrade your I mean to get furniture and to craft stuff so there is that now I'm going to show you gameplay on the on one of the EXP stages and I will try to explain how does the gameplay work as you can see here is my team your team will consist of 12 units and you can take one support unit as well if you wish to do so but for the first time clear you don't want to take a support unit just so that you can get a 3 star clear so I'm not going to take a support unit and yeah let's wait for it to load and I will try to explain the gameplay okay so let's pause it for a second so at the top you can see the amount of enemies that you have to kill so in this case, in this case 55 also it tells you how many enemies can go past your base before you lose so in this case three i believe at the bottom you can see all of your units also those points here those are called deployment points i have 25 at the start and as you can see the unit limit is eight deployment deployment points regenerate passively over time but in some stages they don't regenerate and you need to use the characters that give you deployment points from using their skills and some units also give you deployment points 
from killing the enemies. The blue square is my base and the red squares indicate from where the enemies are going to come from. Of course there are the enemies that are going to be walking down the path and some of them will be flying through the air. But yeah, let's pause it and at the start I'm going to deploy my vanguards because as you can see they will give me deployment points and also vanilla her skill gives me six deployment points once it's ready and another important thing to keep in mind is that for this game you don't want to keep the battle speed at at two at, you don't want to play on double speed all the time especially if you are doing a stage for the first time because the game speed will be kinda too fast and you will not be able to react to what is happening on the screen so right now there is quite a lot of enemies coming but I will be fine now I need to deploy the defender unit so I can block the enemies from going to my base also another important thing is when you will look at your unit it will tell you how many enemies you can block so for example this unit Beagle she can block three enemies but if I will not be able to kill the enemies in time basically what will happen is as soon as the fourth enemy goes and I will not be able to kill the fourth enemy, the fourth enemy will go through her. That's why you need to, you know, place the units next to each other so they can cover, cover for each other. Because she can block three units, for example, but Feng, the unit higher than her, can only block two units. So that's pretty important and something that you have to keep in mind as well. Let's use the healing skill. Now, I have to be careful right now because it's getting kinda crazy. I need some more deployment points. So I'm waiting for those. Okay, let's deploy Amiya here at the bottom for some more DPS damage. And now I will need to deploy Quora at the top so she can help with blocking the other enemies. Okay, let's deploy her at the top. She can block three enemies. Let's activate her skill to get some more deployment points as well. And we should be okay, I believe. I could recall maybe one of my units. Actually no, Fang should die in a little bit and once Fang dies I can just deploy another unit but maybe she will not die because there is healing going on right now and I have enough DPS so maybe we'll be fine but you can retreat the unit if you don't if you feel like don't, you don't need it anymore because there is unit limit when it comes to how many of them can be deployed at the same time and on the more difficult stages in the game you will be doing it quite frequently also when your unit dies it also goes back into the standby mode as well and as you can see if your unit dies or if you retreat her you need to wait for the cooldown to go down first and I was not paying attention, so I let like two enemies go through, but it's fine, I was trying my best to explain all of the mechanics, at least the basic ones when it comes to the gameplay, so it's fine. We managed to clear it anyway, because not that many managed to go through, so it's okay. So that's how the combat looks like in this game. As you can see, it's not, it's not an easy type of gameplay. You definitely need to use your brain and think a lot. So I really like about this game. You you cannot use like just the six stars and just like you know steamroll through the stage. You actually need to think. It's actually also pretty important to use the low cost units as well because they don't cost as much to deploy 
compared to the six star units which cost quite a lot if you want to deploy them in the combat so that's also something to consider while making your teams but yeah that's how the combat looks like now let me talk a little bit about how do you upgrade your characters so when it comes to the promotion hold up she's actually already maxed let's look at Justica for example when it comes to the promotion you just need the level enough LMD which is the gold the right materials that you can get from the daily stages that I haven't shown but I can show it real quick so one second you go to the combat and here on, under the chips section is where you get the materials that you need for promotion there is also one more game mode which is called annihilation and the reward from this is a weekly reward as you can see and this game in this game mode you will want to kill as many enemies as you possibly can before the timer runs out i believe i haven't done it myself but you need to kill as many enemies as you possibly can and if you kill 400 you will get the maximum reward of random and random is what you use for gacha basically or for stamina as well i believe there is also one more currency so i'm going to talk like really quick about it so there is random and this you use for gacha this this is what you would want to use for gacha or random there is also this currency which is called originite prime now this currency has a lot of uses you can exchange it for random or you can use it to buy skins or you can use it for level up packs which are not in the closed beta version yet or you can use it for refilling your stamina and basically you never want to use this on on the gacha pools because you can use random on gacha pools instead if you don't want to get skins with this currency you just use it on stamina refill and on level up packs so there is that now let's go back over to the operation operators page when it comes to the potential this is basically increasing increasing your character's power through the duplicate system so if you get a duplicate of jessica then you can increase her potential or you can just get those tokens which you can get from the store and the potential increase is actually pretty nice because as you can see it will reduce the deployment cost increase their attacks and also reduce the redeployment time so what's important here is the is the fact that deployment cost will go down and also the redeployment time will go down so that's pretty nice now another thing is the skill upgrade so as i just said you just need those materials that you can get from the daily stages and then you just upgrade the skills and one more nice thing about this game when it comes to like being really good at teaching the players how to play it is that you can see her role at the bottom right she's a sniper you can just click on this icon and it will explain what all of those classes do and even though all of those explanations are short the tutorials in the story mode will teach you about every single of those classes so i don't think there is any need for you to watch any tutorial guides for any of those classes the game will tell you everything you need to know at least in my opinion so i believe that's everything when it comes to the characters section now let's go over to the gacha there is two different gachas there is the recruit option and the game gives you a lot of the tickets for the recruitment so all you need is the ticket and enough gold then you choose what class the character that you possibly get you want to be so i can choose okay i want to possibly get a vanguard so i just do so i just choose vanguard and then the longer you wait the higher possibility you have of getting the class tag you have chosen in here and also as you can see if i increase the time to eight hours then i cannot get and two stars or one stars anymore 
so it's important to always do the longer recruitment if you can of course I'm going to speed up the recruitment process you can speed it up with this item right here if you have it so let's see who do we get that's how the summoning animation looks like you open the bag and then you get the file folder with the candidate and then, then you will know who do you get so I have gotten scavenger first time I see her she's a vanguard which is pretty nice and she looks pretty cool as well also another form of recruitment is through the standard gacha system now when you first start the game there is two banners the first banner that I don't have already because I already have used my two tries is a discounted banner and the first temple will basically guarantee you a six star unit so there is no point in re-rolling for this game but if you want to you can do that now this is the standard banner it doesn't have any discount when it comes to the raids when you get a six star you have 50% chance for either XUSI or Angelina in this case and for the five stars there is three different five stars featured on the banner and 50% between three of them the six star probability is two percent but the nice thing is that if you don't get any six star after 50 rolls the odds of getting six star will be continuously increasing and if you don't manage to get any six star like before the banner ends on the next banner you will still have your pt rate at the same percentage so it works exactly the same way as in crossing void so that's really nice now let's go also quickly over the base and then i will do the gacha pool and i'm going to end the video so here is your base your command center there is the dormitory the dormitory you use for increasing the mood of your characters because as they will work in your command center their mood will go down so once their mood goes down you just place them in here of course you can decorate this thing if you want to if you have the uh, if you have the furniture and so on also there is the trading post factory and power plant the power plant basically produces the power and I forgot what does the power even do to be honest the factory in the factory you get the poor gold which then you can exchange in the trading post for the precious metal order so I'm going to speed the acquisition order process using drones which regenerate over time anyway so let's just accelerate it now I have received the order I exchanged two poor gold bars that I have and I'm going to get some gold that was a wrong button hold up and once I exchange it I'm going to get some gold received. so that's how the buildings work I seriously forgot what is the power for I'm, I'm sorry guys I I just don't remember what did the power do but yeah <laughs> it happens what can I say in the workshop actually I forgot what do you get in the workshop as well hold up oh in the workshop this is basically how do you craft the items like if you need this thing you need it for upgrading your base so that's how you craft the items in the workshop and here is oh. where you search oh, for for clues and you need to collect all of them then you can unlock the exchange I'm not going to go too far into explaining all of it so basically that's how the base your command center looks like of course you can expand all of it when you progress through the story and you will have multiple trading ports trading posts and also multiple factories so there is that now let's go to the gacha temple and then i'm going to give you my final opinions final opinion when it comes to this game so let's perform 
the temple yes let's spend the currency and let's see what do we get i'm going to just open the first bag i'm going to see all of them and then i'm going to skip and let's see if we got anything worth while nope we got no six star and we got some tokens for increasing the potential which is always nice and some currency that we can use in the shop okay guys so that's everything that i wanted to show in this video now when it comes to my final opinion when it comes to this game i would say this is a very high quality game the artworks are great the story mode is good translation quality is high but there is some things i don't like so i mean that i personally don't like of course maybe you will not mind mind this but i do mind so the first thing that i don't like is that there is no end game there is not enough end game content to do in this game like there is only annihilation which can be considered as end game content there is nothing else so they really need to work on this and i really hope that for the events in this game they will release them pretty often so what i hope for them to do is that they will release the event and once the event ends they will release the next one right after the first one ends because otherwise this game is just simply too slow and there is not enough stuff to do and my second complaint is that there is not enough stamina given out for free of course you get like 200 sanity out from the weekly missions for free but when it comes to the daily missions you don't get any sanity for free the daily mission should, should give at least 30 sanity for free so those are my main complaints when it comes to this game there is not enough end game content there is not enough stuff to do and there is no free sanity from daily missions so there is no free stamina from daily missions those are my main two complaints if you don't mind the fact that this game is extremely heavy side game then go for it i will also be playing this game but i really hope they will introduce some end game and some more stuff to do in it so yeah guys that's my final opinion on this game definitely recommend it and definitely give it a shot if you don't mind the fact that this is a heavy side game if you are looking for a main game then this is definitely not it so yeah guys as always thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys next time bye